<sighs> what a morning. <laughs> so I'm actually sitting on the ground this morning as I'm going through my Instagram course because I'm so bad at Instagram these days. I used to be so good at it. <laughs> like I was so consistent and everything was so like natural and I used to get like tons and tons of followers every day. And I was having so much fun with it. And then life went to shit. <laughs> it's a nice way to say it. Um, I keep looking at the con the camera like it's over here. But since this is on my phone, I forget the camera's on the other side. Anyhow. So I'm actually sitting on the ground. Like one of my favorite spots to sit. <laughs> because um, it's right near my fireplace. Uh, and it's right near like the best view ever in my house. <laughs> but it's not the best view. Actually, my older daughter has the best view. So, with that said, I am um, just waking up, really. I get up, mm, I don't know, it varies. Some days I can get up at 6. I don't often get up at 5. I used to force myself to get up at 5, and it was fine. But then, I'm such, like, more focused at night than I am during the morning. So, I figure, you know, what's the point in wasting those extra hours in the morning if I'm really not getting anything done? <laughs> I mean, it's nice because, you know, I'm up and I usually read and stuff, which is good. But it's not like I'm on, like, some time constraint that I'm just like, okay, I have to get to work in, like, three hours or something. So, I got to get my workout in. I've got to, like, read my books. I've got to do whatever, 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 whatever. That's why I'm an entrepreneur. That's why I'm an online entrepreneur. That's why I work from home and I don't have an office anymore with employees. Um, which technically, I didn't technically have an office with employees. Uh, my partner did. And I just helped fund the business and provide work from home because I did all the paperwork and I still did all the customer service and, and the outreach. And so I was still working um, with everybody, but it was more like I was working in the business, not on the business. And that's kind of like what's happening right now, actually. So let's talk about that, I guess. <laughs> Working in the business and on the business is totally different. And I don't know how I got this far in on working on, in my business. I do and I don't. And it all has to do with influences. So again, you know this is going to turn into like a whole mindset thing, right? <laughs> you know it is because it's me. Okay, so hopefully I don't have like all this sun hitting my forehead because I had so much sun damage the last couple years because... My desk was in front of, um, my desk was in front of my window and yeah, all the sun's not good for me. So I'm going to actually lower my blinds just a bit. I think, I think I'll be okay because I don't want to have to restart this. <laughs> so we'll just kind of like find a spot where I'm not like there getting so much sun on my head and my mouth but you know it's it's always gonna be like that I guess for now I gotta put my sunscreen on because I haven't done that yet this morning literally like I said you guys are seeing me at my one of my rawest forms <laughs> one of my rawest forms and I don't wear much makeup guys and you know that I don't just because I do get so much sun and in Virginia you know it's very humid and it's got a lot of moisture in the air so wearing makeup is just awful because it's always like caking up or it's always like clogging your pores and your face is always sweaty and oily feeling and it's just nasty. So that's that's the number one reason why I don't wear makeup. But really, it all has to do with influence. <laughs> Again, mindset stuff. And your whole life is based around, like, the influences that are in your life. That it is very true when the saying says you are the byproduct of the five people you hang around the most. And that is so true because, not because so much of their values. I mean, that does rub off too. I've seen it happen. So, say if you hang out with a whole bunch of singles, you're going to act single. Say if you hang out with a whole bunch of people that are divorced, you're going to start questioning your own relationship. Yeah, so I've seen that like tons of times now, but either way, so it's like the influences that you hold, like 
you know, leak it out into your own environment because that's all you know, right? It's not so much like you want that lifestyle or you want that personality type and you do, you just find them like cool and friendly and amazing and amazing and maybe they're an awesome person and do amazing things, but their values don't quite align to your lifestyle now and you feel like you have to hold on to those relationships because you've had them so long and, you know, you don't want to let them down and you don't want them to feel like they're neglected or anything like that. And that's what happens to all of us, but we got to do it for us. And I don't mean it in the sense that you're being mean or you're being like disrespectful or anything. But the thing is, you know, you have to grow. You have to grow. You can't stay down, you know, and I don't want to say down. You can't stay on the same wavelength as other people because that makes more sense. You can't stay the same wavelength as other people that are not willing to change their wavelength with you. And there's there's no relationship in the world that I know that has been forever. And I don't mean like marriage, <laughs> which, you know, technically, yes, that doesn't technically last forever either. It still has to ebb and flow and people have to be aligned in the same uh, wavelength, right? So there's different things um there's different stages, not things. There's different stages in life that you have to adapt to. And, you know, some people can't adapt to that. Or, like I said, again, they're hanging out with people that, you know, don't align with their core values. Um, or they just want to be somebody else. I mean, so either way, you can't control any of what other people do, say, do, anything. All you can do is stay true to yourself and, you know... Align yourself with people that you want to be like, um, that inspire that you, but really essentially has the same core values. So, for example, like I said, I started going on this a little bit and uh, a couple times already. So when um, I was married, <laughs> I was thinking about this this morning, I was discouraged to drinking these these amazing drinks, not particularly this one. I, I've been drinking Owen forever now, but just drinking like protein shakes because it was expensive and it wasn't like what I needed because I wasn't like a marathon runner or I wasn't like um, a triathlon or I wasn't like bike riding like eight hours a day. This is, this is all stuff from my ex. Like he didn't think I needed protein. Period. He didn't want me to lose weight. He didn't want me to change my diet. He didn't want me to go out. He was pissed off that I did go out. <laughs> he was pissed off. Like I said, it was just a bad environment. And it was so detrimental to my health for so long because I would literally like work so hard on like who I am and like my values with diet and nutrition and everything. And I was so good for like a, like a summer. Like I would be good for like three, four months. And then like the visible signs would show that I'm actually getting healthy. And my partner would literally tear me down. Like he would force me, not really force force me to eat, but technically yes. He would say that he would divorce me if I didn't go to dinner with him. Or he would be pissed if I didn't eat the same things he was eating. And when I told him that I wanted to go on a raw diet, this was probably, let's see, that was probably like in 2014 or something. And then I got separated in 2018 and then 2019 and then divorced in 2021 after a two and a half year separation. Um just to give you some timeline there. Uh, yeah, but that was like in 2014, I said that I wanted to go on a raw diet because, you know, we were eating all these like um, really junky, it wasn't, it was supposed to be healthy, but it's definitely not healthy because it is full of carbs. But we were eating all this stuff from like Applebee's, like these salad bowls with like these, this chicken, like, um, what do they call them? Boneless chicken wings in them with filled with dressing and everything else. And then I found out, well, those were like 3,000 calories or something like that crazy. And I was like, I don't want to eat this. And then um, what else was there? I was I was eating like chicken wings from Buffalo Wild Wings all, like every Friday night. And I had to drink like three beers with him because he was pissed off if I didn't have more than one because I wasn't fun or I wasn't cool if I didn't 
like drink more with them because he was drinking more. And so I was literally forced and sure, we'll say forced. Uh, I, I was literally forced to continue this lifestyle and drink and eat stuff I didn't feel healthy was for my body. And the same thing with our kids, even that, during that time. I was a very cushy mom, you could say, uh, where, you know, I really looked for, like, the best foods for them, fruits, vegetables, and everything. And he'd be pissed off that I even bought fruits and vegetables because they were supposedly expensive. But in reality, we ate out like every single day. It cost us $3,000 just for just us two to eat out. And our kids were so little that we would just give them, um, you know, some of our portion. Because, you know, American food portions on most of these restaurants are humongous. Or they would just eat like baby food because they were, like I said, they were really little back then. They were, they were like babies, babies. And so they were still eating like, um, you know, baby food. So they're eating baby food and we give them just a couple pieces of our chicken or something. And like I said, so I was living this unhealthy lifestyle based on my environment. And then not only that, um, you know, grow, <laughs> growing up, yeah, basically growing up. So in my in, around that time too, like I was trying to form a good relationship with my parents, which we have a decent one now. I wouldn't say it's the best, but it's decent. They're they're fine. They're great, I guess. <laughs> so I, I don't want to say I guess, but they they come in and go in my life and just want to like put pressure on on me for being me. <laughs> like so it's again, it's the influences that you hold. They want me to be more like them and do stuff like they do. Um, but yeah, anyhow, I saw influences. But yeah, so even that time with my parents, you know, my they would come over and they would only stay a couple hours and we had to do exactly what they're doing and we had to stop everything and like uh, you know, cater to them when they came over. And then if they didn't like something about our yard, they would literally like start working on it. And it was just like, wait, what? Why'd you cut down our ivy that was on our house? It's like, oh, because it was a weed. It's like, no, we were growing ivy on our house. Like now you just like, thanks. That was like years of work right there. <laughs> like, and then we got a, uh, my ex-husband got a motorcycle, like a little one, and his friends and him put stickers all over it, and one of them said, like, F off, but, or something like that, and it just, it didn't even, it said the, the whole word, uh, F, you know, and the rest of it, but the rest of it was crossed out, like, it was a sticker that was like that, <laughs> and my, um, my, uh, my stepdad went over and he took a um, a marker because he tried to peel it off. And then he couldn't peel it off. And nobody knew this. He did this without letting anybody know or even ask about it. <laughs> so he went over there and, like, started peeling off and it wouldn't come off, apparently. And so he asked somebody for a marker. And somebody gave him to a marker because this is, like, at a, one of my kids' birthday parties. And then he went out there and, craw like, scribbled it out. And then my husband found out later that night and he was not happy because he was just like, you know, why are we, you know, why do we have your parents over if they literally are coming in, like taking over our, our stuff and doing this stuff to our stuff, basically. Of course he didn't, he wasn't that nice about it, but you know, you get the point. <laughs> um, but yeah, anybody would be pissed off if they were like, you invite family members or friends over and they're like messing with your stuff and they shouldn't be messing with your stuff. And period without you asking and so the same thing happened when I got divorced like they were over here all the time like twice three times a week and they were literally trying to take care of me but not in the good sense <laughs> not like hey do you need anything or hey you know oh you said you needed help with that you know let, let me, you know uh, do you still need help with that no they would literally like just take over again they were like my stepdad jumped in my RV and I just bought it and he wanted to take it to go get gas and he's not on the insurance <laughs> like and I told him that so he got pissed off and they went home and and then another time like he started up my my uh, tractor and he started cutting like my lawn and I was like okay that's weird all right thanks but then he mowed down half of my blackberry bushes because he thought they were weeds because it wasn't in season to grow blackberries so there go that that's like 
years and years and years worth of work right there. Blackberry bushes take like six to 10 years to grow a full bush. So I just lost, I lost half of my crop. <laughs> so I was not happy. Uh, so things like that. And like, I understand they want to be helpful, but then, you know, like I said, again, people have to learn to ask if they need help and then, you know, be respectful of their boundaries and not get pissed off about it. But like I said, that that's what I pretty much, I, I put that in there because I know a lot of you had to deal with that with friends and family, or you maybe you're dealing with it now. And, you know, you gotta, like I said, surround yourselves with people that you want to have the same values and have the same like respect for themselves and each other and <laughs> everything like that. And, you know, it does make a huge difference on who you pay attention to and who you watch and um, who you want to become. And that's really the important thing on it because stop looking back in the past. Okay, the past has happened. It's done. It's over. Stop blaming anybody. Like I said, my parents are great now. I mean, they're them. And they're always going to be them. And I'm always going to have something that I'm going to have to deal with with my parents just as much as my friends and my kids and my dogs. That We all have our quirks and we all have our issues, right? And sometimes, you know, our issues don't uh, make other people happy and they might point it out or they might want to do something about it. But that's why, you know, you have boundaries and you have respect <laughs> and you have like all that other stuff. But most essentially, you got to, you know, stay focused on who you're creating, who you're creating, who are you doing it for, you know, and like I said, this morning, I was really thinking a lot about this, what I pulled out my, my protein shake, because, you know, it was so hard for me to just stay on track with any major goal in my life to do with my nutrition or my health, because, you know, I looked good overweight. <laughs> that, that's basically what my ex-husband told me. And then when we got separated um, officially in 2019, he told me I was hideously ugly because I was overweight and a whole bunch of other shitty stuff. But, <laughs> so don't care what anybody else tells you. Don't care. Like, seriously, do not care. Like, do not. Do it all for you. I, I did my hair like this for me. Yeah, it's still not right. The color's still not right. Like, my stylist just doesn't understand, like, what I'm trying to do with the color. But we're getting closer. So, <laughs> I'm looking at it now in the side mirror. But we are getting closer. It is getting closer, so I'm happy. It is not, like, so, like, greenish like it was. Like, this blonde pieces were, like, almost, like, a pale, yucky, orangish red and this pink like this pink tone this raspberry they call it is right but it's wrong too because it wasn't supposed to be like my whole head is like this it was supposed to be streaks I don't know like I said <laughs> at least it didn't damage my hair and cut it all off that that's the good thing because that's what happened the last two stylists and I don't want to say you get what you pay for because those last two stylists were like double to triple the price that I paid the lady that did my hair last that actually got the correct color in my my roots, my natural color. And so I got my natural color back <laughs> and, you know, she actually toned down this orange color that I literally was telling everybody that I hated. So, you know. Thank God, like I said, but it doesn't have anything to do with money. It really just has with people, like, actually paying attention. Uh, but, yeah, so don't care what people say. Like, seriously, don't care. Do you and the right people align with you or not because they're on a different mission. You can't change people. Be you. Stay strong. Learn from your past. But you don't have to become it. Okay. All right. I'm going to leave it like that. You guys have an amazing day and I'll talk to you later.